Here we are. We are working on the acceleration activity. For the acceleration activity, I recommend getting a Hot Wheels car and a meter stick, but you can do this with just a number line handy. The Hot Wheels car is just a nice visual aid. But let's let's focus on just using, uh, for say, a number line. Let me get on the pointer here. So on a number line, and the whole purpose of this acceleration activity is to make sure that we understand how acceleration actually works because it's it's one of those fundamental ideas in physics so let's start off on the table here you'll see this activity you got four pages that all kind of look the same but on each page you have a different starting point a different starting velocity and a different acceleration now you'll notice this this grid time you got a nice 10 second time frame velocity starts at 10 so therefore, if your velocity is 10 centimeters per second, in one second, you will travel 10. Now, if you start at the zero and you travel 10, you'll be placed at the 10. So just check this out for a second here. Let's do a nice highlighter spot. And our car will be a green dot. So we're starting at the, ten, at the zero. Our first second will travel 10 centimeters per second. So we'll go to the 10. Time frame number two. Now we are accelerating. If we're starting at 10, and our acceleration modifies our velocity by positive 2, well, what's 10 plus 2? Go ahead and think about that answer in amongst yourself. Well, hopefully you came up with the idea that that's 12. So... If your velocity is 10 and you add 2, you get 12. And there's a class change bell. So you modify it by 2, you end up with 12. Then, if you're traveling at a velocity of 12, in one second, can you see it there? It says 12. You're going to go 12. Now, if you're parked at the 10 and you travel 12, where are you going to end up? The answer is not 12. If you put a 12 here, you're only letting your car move two. That's not correct. Your car is going from the 10 point to uh, a point that it's 12 farther. So you're going to be sitting at the 22 when you're done with that. And so let's come back over here. So now I'm just going to draw this one line below. From the 10, now we add an additional 12. There's the 20. Here's the 22 mark. So you'll notice we went a little bit farther that time. Uh, let's just go one more cell and see how we do here. So we're traveling 12 and we modify by 2. Well, 12 and 2, that's going to come out to 14. So in one second, I'm traveling at a velocity of 14. Therefore, I'm going to go 14. Now, here's the tricky thing. If I'm parked at the 22 and I travel 14, I think we're going to add those two up. And I'm going to go from the 22... We go 14 more, it comes out of 36. So, come back here to the drawing. So, I'm here at the 22, and I draw a line that's 14. Right there. And what's going to happen is, oop, oop, a little more. What's going to happen is, you're going to notice that these segments are getting longer and longer and longer and longer because you're accelerating. That's the whole point accelerating is modifying your velocity now you get these questions a what happens to your velocity because of the acceleration i want you to talk about things that are increasing and decreasing the one caution i have for you is in math class you have been taught that negative numbers are small but when we're using a negative negative indicates a direction a negative velocity can be very fast. It's just going backwards. So you really need to be careful when you talk about things getting bigger or smaller, increasing, decreasing. Right here, this car is velocity is increasing in the positive direction without a doubt. So is the displacement. And the position is getting farther and farther and farther away from each other. But when you talk about C, what would happen at 10 seconds had you not accelerated. Well, if you didn't accelerate, you were going 10 for 10 seconds. 
example, 10 and 10 and 10 and 10 and so forth for 10 seconds is 100. You would have gone from the zero to the 100 mark. That didn't happen. So you need to compare whatever comes across down here, uh, 190 something, whatever comes across down here to what if it only traveled at the initial rate. And you'll notice that, you know, different starting point, different acceleration on page two, different starting point, different acceleration, different initial velocity, again, different, different, and different. Like the format's the same, but you're, you're interacting with some different numbers there. And then you'll notice I have you create a grid by hand on the paper. Now I'm going to quick draw, um, a little, sketch of what your grid, sh your graph should look like here. So let's go just real rough and quick here. Um, here's a, an X axis. Here's a Y axis. Okay. Page one, your velocity, you're going to have one graph that's velocity versus time. So on page one, maybe your velocity went like this and on page two, Maybe your velocity went like this. And on page three, maybe your velocity, you know, went backwards. I'm gonna, went like that. And maybe on page four, your velocity did one of these deals. The point being, I want you to take the velocity versus time of all four pages and superimpose them on each other. So you can see the differences in what happened to the different, uh, the different pages. And the same goes with the second graph, which is position. That's the far column. You know, on page one, it behaved different than it did on page two and page three and page four. And so we'll see those four lines interacting with one another. I want you to hand draw these and you really got to pay attention to labeling your axes. Um, I usually hear a lot of paper just getting crumpled up when people do the position by time because they don't consider what is the biggest positive number up here, what is the biggest negative number down here? Zero is not going to be at the bottom. Zero is going to be towards the middle. So you need to consider that when you're drawing this out. Um, and then follow turn-in rules, of course.